Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amanda Carlson, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator here at Advisacon. I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar. Here at Advisacon, we are a group of authors, teachers, consultants, and technologists offering training in Microsoft Technologies, Project Management, and Methodology. With attending any of our training sessions, we offer PDUs as we are a registered education provider with the Project Management Institute. And at the close of today's session, I'll give some instructions on how you can claim your PDUs and how to get in contact with us for any questions you may have. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few things so you know how to participate in today's event. Please review the control panel that should be on the top right of your screen. The audience will be muted during this session, so in order to ask a question, you will need to submit them in the questions window of the control panel. This webinar will be recorded and uploaded on the AdvisorCon YouTube channel for those who could not attend today's session live. Please note that any questions or comments submitted will not be displayed in the recording, nor will any of your personal information be shared. And it's now my pleasure to introduce our instructor, Ken Lowen. He is AdvisorCon's very own Director of Client Solutions. And without further ado, I'll hand this over and we can get started. Thanks very much, Amanda, and welcome to Webinar Wednesday today, everybody. I'm really glad to have you here as we talk about Power BI for non-techies. Let's quickly take a look at what we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about some conceptual foundations so that we have some a common context for the discussion. We'll talk about what Power BI actually is, and we're going to talk about where that sits in relation to using Excel because frankly, that is one of the most commonly used tools in the world for a very good reason. I'm gonna do a demo of basically all parts of the, uh, the Power BI platform that I talk about in step number two. And if we have any time remaining in our half hour together today, I will take questions. And as Amanda said, please submit those using the questions pane on the control panel. If we don't have an opportunity to devote time in today's webinar to the questions, we'll certainly respond to you uh, via email. So, business intelligence, what a concept. What is business intelligence? Business intelligence has some very important goals that we'll go over in uh, just a moment, but I want to talk about how we have progressed in working with business intelligence. Historically, business intelligence was the purview of the IT organization or business analysts, so people with a core role in creating business intelligence. Um, so the first wave was a very technically oriented wave where we had people who would use frankly, fairly expensive tools uh, in order to manage, manipulate uh, the various data and then uh, export that or create some sort of a report or dashboard for use by others. In the second wave, the, uh, these tools became somewhat more broadly accessible. And frankly, there are still tools out there that remain the purview of the IT and business analyst users. But with the third wave, we're now trying to really heavily democratize business intelligence as a, uh, a task that uh, just about anybody can do as a part of their job duties. And Microsoft's, one of Microsoft's key goals in releasing Power BI as a tool and a platform was to make these tools very easily accessible to everybody who wants to use them. Let's take a look now, what is it we're trying to accomplish with business intelligence? So with business intelligence, it all boils down to we're trying to get actionable insights that enable us to make smarter decisions and thereby drive better business outcomes. So it's all about going after information or after data and turning the data into information. We break that down uh, in a couple of different ways. One of the ways we do it is which direction are we looking? So descriptive analytics is focusing on what happened in the past, what, what was going on. So a lot of what we think about in terms of, say, our financial reporting is here's what our income was for the last month or the last quarter. Predictive analytics, concerned with what's going to happen in the future. So we're trying to uh, predict, that's the root word in predictive, uh, what's going on. 
and we think a lot about what's going on with uh, project management in that way, that project managers are able to predict when are we going to hit a certain milestone or what results are we going to, to drive at certain times. Next comes prescriptive analytics, and we're now really digging down into our information, and we're trying to predict the future and recommend the best course of action so that you're able to analyze multiple options and determine here are the outcomes for each of those options given actions that I have the opportunity to take. And so again, in our craft of project management, we're often trying to be prescriptive and uh, predict what's going on in the future and analyze uh, different options for our executing our project, a what if analysis. So very, very common, and using tools such as Power BI can help us to do that. I often tell my clients that even with the core capabilities of Microsoft Project on the desktop, they have better predictive information than often their uh, purchasing or accounting organizations do about the costs to be incurred for the projects. And... Uh, because they've got time phased planning and much of the information that their accounting or budgeting organization have is, well, here's a purchase order and it's open through the end of the year, so I know total spending will be this amount, or I've got a financial uh, report that says we spent X last month against our budget of Y, uh, and then they try to derive some sort of a forecast. And we have a lot of experience of project managers learning that they've gotten the haircut to their project budget because they appear to be underspending uh, on their plan. And in fact, maybe they've got a really good trend information in their uh, project schedule that tells them we're actually right on our spending plan, but it's not a straight line plan that my accounting organization knows about that, that um, they had to uh, guess or, or create a guesstimate. Um, and so the idea of having good business intelligence about our projects can often help us to head off one of those conversations about a haircut to our project budget. Let's talk about our tools, Power BI. So Power BI is a combination of a web service, so a web page and a portal, and also a desktop tool. So if we are familiar with using project server or project online, we've got the same type of a metaphor. We use project on the desktop and we use our server that's either, that's accessed through our browser. And so with Power BI, we do much the same thing. We have a Power BI desktop client and we have a web service. The Power BI desktop client is free to obtain. So you can download that from Microsoft at powerbi.com and install that on your PC. Assuming you have uh, administrator access to your PC and are able to install the application. Beyond that, there is the web portal, and in order to get that, you can get a free uh, license if you register with a uh, business uh, email address at powerbi.com, and your organization allows you to do that. There's also a paid level of the service, and so you have all of the functionality in the free level except for the ability to share and collaborate, so you can create uh, all, all manner of analyses, very complex analyses, using the full capabilities of the desktop. But if you do want to actually share that analysis uh, via the Power BI web service, uh, then you will have to have a paid service through your organization. The wide variety of data sources that we see in the yellow box at the left side of this slide is ever growing. And what it speaks to is that Power BI will access our data just about anywhere it resides. We can go after it in software as a service solutions. We can go after data in an on-premise system. Uh, we will have to deploy the free enterprise data gateway for that. Um, we have the ability to use custom content packs or app packs as they've been rebranded. Um, we can go after data that sits in Azure uh, services. We can import data and connect to data in Excel files very easily. And then there are the files that we create in the Power BI desktop that we can access. 
And so then we can push that data in the right side of this screen to any type of a machine that we want to be viewing our dashboards and our reports on, whether it's a mobile device of some type or a laptop or desktop computer. And we do that by creating a data set, which contains here's the data I want to look at and here's what I want you to do with it, potentially an automatic data refresh on some sort of a predictable cycle. We pin all that information together into a report using visualization. So each one of the pretty colored pictures that you see in those screens is itself a visualization. So we build a report by combining different visualizations. We can then deploy those to a dashboard, which is targeted at our target audience. So somebody who we're going to present information to. So that can be our senior leadership, it can be our project management office, it can be the team members on our project, any one of those. One of the key features of Power BI is we have natural language query. So we can uh, learn how to uh, use the jargon in our data or map the, uh, the data over to the jargon we use in our business and ask effectively plain English uh, questions of our data. And then we use that all for sharing and collaboration. So we've covered pretty much what Power BI is. That is, in summary, it's Microsoft's business analytics service. And it allows us to deliver those insightful uh, information uh, communications to our uh, business users by transforming the raw data into pictures, a picture being worth a thousand words or far more than a thousand words. Uh, it enables us to share that data with colleagues on any device, uh, visualize, explore, and analyze our data so we can slice and dice it as appropriate. And we can scale this across our organization. So there's built-in governance and security in our Power BI tool so that we are ensuring the uh, security and the con uh, uh, confidentiality of our data while distributing it appropriately and making that labor, um, you know, at, at an appropriate level of work for our people so that we develop that data analysis once, we distribute it, and then we set it to refresh and thereby we're not having to rebuild the silly thing each period. Okay, you say, I hear you saying it. That sounds great, but... I'm really busy. I'm not a techie. I just want to drag and drop and have all the information available to me. And so let's think about what is our, what's the working definition we're going to use of somebody who's not a techie? Uh, what's the value proposition for this conversation that we're in today? So let's take that as maybe it's somebody who's not obsessed with technology. You know, I, I don't fit into that. I love getting into Power BI and building reports and going after new data and creating uh, dashboards. Maybe you're somebody who doesn't want to learn about data modeling. That would fit into my not a techie. Uh, you know, additionally, if you don't even know what that meant. Um, my vocabulary isn't centered on technology jargon or I don't want to, I don't lust after spending time on electronic devices other than my phone. And, um, and then on my phone, I use my camera app more than I do the phone capabilities of it. So. Our techie can also be somebody who's just busy doing the core role of their job and they need the information accessible, but they don't have time to learn about the, uh, the data, figure out how they can extract the information that they want from their data sources and present it effectively and clearly on a page. Because frankly, everything in there takes a little bit of learning and discipline. When you're wanting to communicate information about your projects, it's important to think about, well, what kind of a picture is going to communicate this particular bit of data most effectively and clearly? Is it going to be a line chart or a bar chart or a pie chart or a scatter diagram? Well, all of those are, are possible in Power BI, but not all of those will be as effective at communicating your information. So if we're not going to be the person who's going to make all those decisions and do all of those uh, configuration activities, we fall into our definition of not a techie, and that's who we're talking to in today's webinar. I also hear you asking me, well, can I just use Excel? 
And yeah, you can just use Excel if you want to. Excel will always continue to be uh, a very powerful tool that's very, very flexible. Um, it's very easy and accessible, and it doesn't have a lot of rules. And that's one of the reasons that it's so frequently used. But sometimes we really want some of those rules in place. Um, Power BI is much, much better than Excel when you're working with very, very large amounts of data. Uh, when we want to create and share reports and dashboards, sometimes we don't want to create it as an Excel file that we're going to uh, mail around and potentially lose control of. And maybe we've had experiences where somebody uh, types over a cell in a, in a worksheet and they derive some sort of an incorrect uh, conclusion from the information just because of an error in that. If we want to do detailed analyses of our data, Power BI will probably have more tools that are useful to you than the tools in Excel. Excel is a very useful tool, one of my favorites, but there are things that Power BI does better. If we're having to wait typically for somebody to extract data, slice and dice it, clean it up, analyze it, and prepare an Excel report. It may be that we can map all of those steps into our setup and data transformation for Power BI one time and then set that to refresh automatically and present the information to us as soon as that data has been refreshed, thereby uh, eliminating a lot of the busy work that people do right now to create Excel reporting. If we want the information that we put out there on our dashboards to automatically be sliced and diced by a user so they see the information that they're responsible for and they don't see information that they're not supposed to see, uh, Power BI excels at doing that. Little joke about using Excel there. Um, Power BI has more types of visualization than Excel does, so we can do different types of pictures uh, that are, uh, than are available in Excel. And in Excel, we can only look at one source of data at a time in a workbook, whereas in Power BI, we can map multiple data sources. So uh, some great power there. Let's go take a look at how Power BI works now. I'm bringing across my web portal, or more appropriately, the web portal for one of the senior stakeholders in the organization, Sarah Davis. And Sarah's Office 365 portal shows the applications that she has available to her, including the Power BI app that's right here. So we're going to go to that Power BI uh, application that I have opened up. And so this is the web page for the Power BI web service. And I'm looking at the apps selection here on the left side of the screen. Sarah could also have favorited some things. She could have the recent uh, dashboards and reports that she's looked at. She can be a part of numerous worksheets in the organization or numerous workspaces in the organization, those teams controlled either by Power BI or by Office 365 uh, with secured uh, control over who can get into the team and thereby who can view the information. But Sarah's got instructions that there's an app available for the organization. And so she's going to go to Get Apps and she's going to find the app that was created for the organization and published out here. And I call this the Webinar Wednesday, April 10th app here. And it's got a description on it that tells me this is the leadership team app for CRM and project online data. So I'm actually going to CRM and project online information in our cloud from this data. So I've um, connected to it, I've installed it, and I'm now going to click on it and open up this app. And we're looking at a dashboard that was created as a part of the app and then distributed to the users so that they get this information uh, easily and don't have to worry about configuring it. And we've separated it so the top two rows of information are CRM information and the second two rows are our enterprise project management office information. And so we've got a series of tiles in here that are counting information in the CRM system and we've got a graphic showing when that data was last refreshed. So this was at last refreshed um, about an hour and a half ago. And I always, always, always like to give a user an indication of when the data was last refreshed so that they don't have to ask themselves that question uh, 
if they're trying to uh, confirm that the information is current. The users uh, have access also to the reports from which these um, tiles came. And so if they just click on a particular tile, it takes them into the reports. And we see down at the bottom of the screen uh, a tabbed interface familiar to us like we would work in Excel. And so we've got our various tabs here. And we can see uh, this portfolio dashboard that's showing us a number of projects uh, sorted by type. We've uh, selected certain reports. This actual report pack has got about a dozen different reports in it, but I've chosen to hide most of them just to clean up our view today. And so here is a resource availability report across my demo environment for roughly 100 uh, or 200 resources in the environment, looking at a, uh, a heat map and a stacked bar chart with a line indicating the relationship between demand and capacity. I've also got a single page project status report here. And so I can uh, click the drop down from this and select which project I want to look at. So for my PMO, I can come to this single page formatted project status report. Uh, and I don't have to have somebody out there creating um, individual PowerPoint slides and sending them out. I don't have to worry about them uh, waiting for them to update it. You can see that the information in this is updated as of about uh, an hour ago or 45 minutes ago. Um, and so I can always look at current information that reflects the updates that the project manager has made to their, to their project uh, immediately. And so that's core value to us in Power BI. Let's take a look quickly at how we created that. I'm going to bring across another web page here. And so this one is uh, my administrator uh, logged into the uh, environment. And I go to Power BI. And I've created an app workspace over here called Webinar Wednesday 410. And in this web, this workspace, I've created a series of uh, data sets. So I've got some data that's coming from my CRM system. I've got some data coming from Project Online. From those, I created reports that are aligned exactly the same way. And then I created this dashboard. And once I had my dashboard all available to me, I then uh, had the ability to just click on um, create app up here. Uh, it's now saying update app so that uh, I own this. And if I need to make changes to it, I can update that and all of my users will automatically get those updates. And the, up, the uh, create the app functionality allows me to uh, select which of the data sets, reports, dashboards, workbooks I want to include in that app when I make it available to my users. So, we, that's our high level for the user that doesn't really want to spend uh, any time learning how the data is structured and thinking about what are the particular um, uh, elements that I need in order to build this particular uh, report. Uh, so they, they really want to just drag and drop and have the information made available to them. If the user wants to get a little bit more in depth, Project, or Power BI really does make that available to you. And uh, the idea here is that if you have access to information and data, you can analyze it in Power BI very, very easily. So here's an Excel worksheet, a workbook, series of pages here that I've used to track utility bills at home for the last couple of years. And I uh, have these Excel workbooks sitting in my, um, OneDrive, and I have created, this is now the Power BI desktop uh, tool, the free Power BI desktop tool, and I've built a series of queries here on those Excel workbooks. And so I'm going to go into uh, edit queries, and I'm going to bring over the uh, Power Query editor here. And Power Query is the exact same language as is used in Excel. So if you've got any queries in Excel, if you are one of those power users of Excel, you can migrate those over very, very easily and quickly. What we see in here is that we have a series of applied steps. And so we build the uh, query by doing each of these steps. So we find a source. And so if I look at the source for that, what you see is that this is up here telling me, well, I've got uh, an Excel workbook. See, it's an Excel workbook that sits on my desktop in a folder. 
and I'm going to select a particular tab in there. And now you see something that reminds you very much of the workbook that we looked at uh, in the Excel window a few moments ago. So we see we've got rows and columns of information. And right now, all these columns are coming in as just any data. And uh, Power BI is going to look at that and it's going to automatically change those data types for me so that I now have uh, items that are marked as decimal numbers. It hasn't yet figured out what these dates are. Um, and in term, in actuality, what we're going to do next is we're going to edit this and we're going to remove the bottom rows, remove some junk off the bottom of the, the workbook. Uh, we're going to remove some columns and clean this up a bit. We're going to filter some rows. We're going to then transpose that data so that we uh, turn it around and make the columns into rows so that we can look at the data in, as a series of rows. We promote those headers up there. I've actually created a um, conditional column here. And so what this is doing is it's looking for uh, a certain date when I moved from one state to another state and it's because the information in this excel workbook covers living in two different states so it needed to change format over time because my utility bills changed and i just went through a series of steps using the uh, toolbars and we do much more detailed power bi classes uh, that I would recommend that you consider if you're interested in learning how to do this. Uh, in our multi-day classes, we go from building a simple project status report at, by the end of the first day into looking at detailed analyses that are important to your organization. Um, and so that could be looking at your SAP data, it could be looking at uh, detailed time phase data in your project environment, like resource demand capacity, any one of those types of things. And so what we see here in this chart for electricity consumption is if you look at the legend up at the upper left, the color, the years go from dark green in the earliest to dark red at the latest. And so you can see that generally my electricity consumption has dropped over this uh, several year period and that's a great thing um, and I was very glad to see the insights this was very very easy to build in um, our Power BI tool so we've looked at how we can um, develop some very powerful very complex business intelligence reporting in Power BI if you want to if you want to understand how your data is built and you want to build the reports by selecting the appropriate data and the appropriate visualization type and combining those into a report, you can do that. You can also have somebody else develop those reports and dashboards, either somebody in your organization who we would be glad to train for you, or you can have us do them for you. And so we often will deploy report packs like I showed you a part of for our clients when we assist them to deploy project online. And once you've got those reports and dashboards, you can distribute them across your organization in the form of an app. You can develop basic analyses on information you have accessible to you on your uh, hard drive, like the, uh, the Excel information that I just showed you. You can analyze multiple data sources in one tool. I formatted that utility bill analysis in, uh, into four Excel files just to demonstrate that it works just as easily in four Excel files that are formatted differently than it does in uh, having to merge the data into one file. You can get started for free. The Power BI desktop tool is available for download for free. And you then extend into paid levels of the service if you want the data sharing and collaboration capabilities on the Power BI web service. You can get deeper information about this in classes that are on our webpage at advisacon.com slash event. Uh, and we've got a two hour webinar entitled Power BI for the PMO coming up next uh, in about two weeks. Um, 
And so if you're interested in that, do go to advisacon.com slash event. In May and June, we've got some cost modeling, forecasting, and reporting with Microsoft Project classes that are going to teach you some of the same concepts of getting information out and making meaningful reporting. So if that general topic is of interest to you, definitely look into those classes also. And feel free to call me or email me if you want to discuss any custom training. Amanda, I'd like to pause now and see if we've got any questions. Uh, I think we might have a moment uh, to, to catch one or two. Well, we are over time, um, but we will just answer a quick one. How about that? That sounds great. So we've got somebody that's asking about sharing data with other people with the free account. Is that uh -huh. a possibility or do they have to extract the data and email it separately? Yeah, you would have to extract the information and email it separately or send the Power BI uh, file that you've created in exactly the same way that you would send an Excel report to somebody else. Uh, the same risks, you know, the person could delete it, they could change uh, something that's in there and break the analysis, um, but that is available to you if you want to share in the, um, in the free app. You do have the ability to uh, publicly share uh, dashboards uh, with no security, literally no security. The web page that instructs you how to do that cautions you very obviously that there is no security, that you're exposing your information to the public, but that's also an option. We'd be more than happy to discuss more deeply with you. Thanks for the great question. Yeah, and we got a lot of other great questions that are a little more in-depth, so I highly encourage those people to check out our webinar that's coming up April 25th. That will be the next step. So if you want to dive even deeper, that would be a great resource for you. And we also have some past recordings of our webinars on similar topics and all of the other Microsoft technologies on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com backslash advisacon. That's all available to you for free, so check that out as well. And we thank you all for attending today's webinar. We welcome your questions and your feedback. And for more information, you can email us at contact at advisacon.com. Once you exit today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation. And once you complete and submit that survey, we will send you your PDUs within two business days. And if you're watching this recording on YouTube or another social media platform, please be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. And on behalf of AdvisaCon, Ken and myself, we thank you for joining us today and hope to see you participate in our future webinars. Have a great day, everyone.